Okay, cool. All right. So uh, I am here live with Mark Gregory Lopez and one of our amazing authors. And we are here in a brand new series called 20 Questions, which means I'm probably going to ask more than 20 questions, but hey, <laughs> it should be fun. Okay. So Mark, what was the first book that you remember reading? Um, probably The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. No way. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, just because my uh, I hung out with my cousin a lot and she had the like the whole Dr. Seuss series. And I remember The Cat in the Hat like pretty vividly. So may, that probably wasn't the first first book, but it's the first one I remember. I love it. Uh, so who was your favorite author in um, in any genre? in like your favorite genre? Mm, probably, I read mostly fiction, um, mm -hmm. but I, probably Toni Morrison. I just oh, feel no. like, yeah, I feel like with her, it's like you're, you're never gonna get anything bad. I mean, it's, it's just, you can't write a bad book, I don't think. Oh, sweet. Um, who do you feel influenced your writing the most? Kate Braverman. Um, yeah, she wrote uh, this book called Lithium for Medea. She wrote another one called Palm Latitudes. Um, but I read Lithium for Medea pretty young. And that, I remember reading it and kind of being like, man, like, if I could write a book like this one day, that would be pretty cool. And I think, um, yeah, so she she's definitely a huge influence just because uh, she, she has a very poetic style of writing. It's not just it's very poetic literary fiction, I guess. That's yeah. awesome. Um, who do you feel influenced your writing the most? Mm. I don't no, maybe, maybe my grad school professor, Deborah Paredes, uh, she teaches at Columbia. She, oh. she, I took a formalism class with her when I was a student there. And uh, she basically made me realize that like, as a poet, I'm a, I'm a formalist. So I work really well with form. And so that was a pretty big sort of because I mean, I, I went for poetry, but the thing I, before the program, I always just said, oh, I'm a free verse poet. I don't do, I don't work with form. I don't work with constrictions. But then I took her class and I was like, oh, I'm a total formalist. Like, I don't know why I said I wasn't because I really am. And I actually really love working with constrictions. I really love working, giving myself rules and working within those roles and seeing mm. what happens. So yeah, she she oh. blew the lid off everything for me. <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, what books made the biggest impact on you? Uh, My Antonia, or My Antonia, I don't know how to say it, by Willa Cather. I read that in high school. Mm -hmm. And that really got me back into reading. Like there was a period where I just wasn't reading books. I didn't care about it. And then I read that, I think like freshman or sophomore year of high school. And I was like, okay, books are amazing. Let's go back to those. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, if you could read only one book for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. I feel like a question like that is gonna change every day. <laughs> uh, right now, I would probably say um, The People of Paper by Salvador Placencia. Um, I've read it three times and I feel like every time I read it, I figure something else out or I, I kind of latch onto a, another character or I've never read a book like it. so. It's one of those that I, I go back to it just to kind of be like, man, how does he do it? So mm. probably that one. Wow, that's cool. Um, and what do you reread all the time? Mm. 
I'm not a big rereader of books. That's why I guess the Salvador Placencia one is one that I, I, I would say is like a really big one because I've reread it a few times. Um, mm -hmm. I've reread Beloved by Toni Morrison. A, like I've read that one, I think mm -hmm. like four times. That's probably the most I've read a book. Um, wow. But yeah, and I tried to recommend it to a friend, but they were like, this is too sad. How do you read this over and over again? <laughs> 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 um, what book would you save in a, bur in a uh, burning building? I, probably Beloved by Toni Morrison. <laughs> I feel like that, that needs to be protected. <laughs> there you go. Um, and what inspired you to write the book that you wrote with us? Uh, it came from a variety of places. Um, I, I knew that whatever book I would, I knew for a first book, as far as a novel goes, that I wanted a, it to be from the perspective of a child. Um, so that was kind of just the offshoot of like, consuming media that was focused on children that I thought was so poignant. Like the movie Beasts of the Southern Wild is a huge influence on this because that, I feel like that film, you know, you're put in the position of a six-year-old who's navigating her father dying while also their town gonna is going to be swallowed by the ocean. So it's like mm -hmm. a lot of things, but it's like how her brain is able to make sense of everything I thought was so incredible. And so I just said, okay, well, if I'm going to write a book, I want it to be from a child's perspective. And then I don't know, like, I feel like the beginning scene of the book was the first thing to come. And then it was just kind of like, I knew people who had gone through similar things or knew um, some people in my life whose experiences could be mirrored in the book. So it just kind of all was being influenced like around me. It was like kind of just picking and choosing pieces of things around me to go into the book. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and who did you allow to read the book as you were writing it? Um, I let my friend Lisa read it first because she edited it for me. She, I, I, I paid her to edit it for me. So she did the first like good edit. Um, and then after that, I kind of felt a little more comfortable of sharing it with people. Mm -hmm. um, I sent it to my mom. She did not read it. Um, <laughs> I sent it to my, my friend in Albuquerque because the book, I used to live in Albuquerque. So the book's based loosely on that. Mm -hmm. uh, environment. So I sent it to my friend who lives there just to kind of get her thoughts on it. And if it kind of read accurately as far as what the city was like. And and um, she got about halfway through and then told me that she didn't want to, she was like, I love it, but I don't want to finish reading it because I I feel like it's going to change. She goes like, I feel wow. like there's going to be more done to it. And so I feel like I I want to read the finished one. She goes, I want to read it when it's published. And so uh, I just, went, okay. And so I was like, all right, that that's fair. That's um, fair. Yeah. And, that, and it's probably, and it's a good thing because the version I sent her is now six years old. So wow. it's changed so much <laughs> since then. Huh? Wow. Um, okay, if you were at a dinner party with four seats, what four authors or other people would you invite to your table? Uh, Patty Smith, uh, Salvador Placencia, because I would want to ask him to his face how he did what he did. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, Patty Smith, Salvador Placentia, um, Taheem Bajes. He's a poet. Um, I love his his last book, Olio, is incredible. So I would probably invite him to. And um, I'm gonna say another poet. Her name is Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. She -hmm. wrote this book called Beast Meridian. That is mm -hmm. just insane. Um, and 
she's another one of those. Uh, I had like a fanboy moment with her because uh, I follow her on Instagram and I she had posted something about Selena. Mm -hmm. and I'm from Corpus Christi and that's where Selena's from. And she had posted something about it and I commented on it and she replied to my comment and we were kind of going back and forth for a little bit. And I was like, oh my God, I'm talking to Vanessa and Helica. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's Probably. awesome. <laughs> um all right complete change of subject what is your drug of choice Ooh, uh marijuana um i've never been a big drinker mm. uh i've never um yeah i'm i'm a baby when it comes to that but marijuana seems safe and okay so that's it. there you go we're gonna do something something that maybe has less uh, less harm on my body there you go um, and what book is your guilty pleasure? I don't believe in guilty pleasures. I feel like if you like something, you should just like it. Um, cool. having, having said that, I, I mean, I've read some, some stuff that is just like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to feel guilty about it, but I mean, I, I did read one book that a friend gave to me and I kind of thought, I can't, I can't remember what it was called, but it's by the same writer who wrote Sex and the City, Candace Bushnell. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of her other books and I can't remember what it was called, but um, it was just one of those like fun, like rom-com books and I read it um, and I laughed and cried and thought it was great and I remember at one point like someone kind of giving me like a judgy look when I was reading it and I was just kind of like well, this is enjoyable <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> um what movie or tv show is your guilty pleasure okay like again I don't believe in <laughs> guilty pleasure <laughs> I mean um I we I watch a lot of trash tv uh nice. I love trash TV. Um, so the last good trash TV I watched, I got really into the last season of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, okay. <laughs> that was one that uh, I was constantly, like every week calling my mom after and being like, oh my God, did you see this? Because <laughs> she watches it. So it was like a bonding show for me and my mom. Oh, that's awesome. Um. Do you read with music or with quiet or other some other sound? Uh, both. Um, I I if a book is good, I can usually just really focus in on it. Um, so I can read like when there's a lot of stuff going on around me. So I can read with music. I can read if it's quiet. Um, yeah, I visited home and there was a Dallas Cowboy game happening, and it was like the whole family just all around me yelling at the TV. And at one point my cousin was like, you're not really reading that, are you? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And he was just like, how can you pay attention with all of this going on around you? And I was like, cause I'm not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> uh, okay. If you could ask for one thing to change the world, what would it be? God, there's so many. I mean, like, I think one of the one of the big ones that has kind of been on my radar a lot lately is uh, land rights for indigenous people, mm -hmm. especially for sacred sites. I think that that could improve the world on a bigger scale because a lot of it is about preservation. So a lot of it is about environmental awareness. So I feel like that's really huge. Um, also, just universal healthcare. Just like I feel like healthcare should just be free. Just people mm. shouldn't have to go into debt for the rest of their lives for going to a hospital for a night. Yeah, totally. Um, what does your reading environment look and sound like? Mm. How do I read? I'm all looking back. <laughs> what do I? Um, I still need to curate it because it's not here. Um, but uh, just a good chair. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like a good chair is probably the biggest thing because if you're gonna read a book for hours, you should be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, a good lamp or a good light. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like just a good hair and a good lamp is really all you need. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, paper versus ebook versus audiobook. What do you prefer? Paper. Um, I'm bad with audiobooks. Um, I don't, I'm, <laughs> I'm bad at being read to. I don't retain it as well <laughs> if someone's reading it to me. So <laughs> an ebook, I, I don't, I'd probably say I only, I only read paper books um, because ebooks, um, I'm, I'm not a technologically adept person. So sometimes I, I like, I don't have an e-reader and, <laughs> So like, sometimes, you know, I'll think about downloading a book onto my phone and then I'm kind of like, eh, I'm on my phone a lot already. I don't need to read a whole book on it either. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Um, who would you cast as your main character and why? Thought about this a lot um, because that would be a dream. Um, <laughs> I, for Laura, I would probably want an unknown actress just because, or actor, sorry, um, because, I mean, the book spans when she's from 11 to 13, so I feel mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I would want someone who's not as known to you know, give people opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably. Cool. Uh, if you could meet anyone, who would it be and what would you ask them? Ooh. Anybody. I don't know. I, I'm one of those people that like, I don't like to meet people I'm a fan of because I always put my foot in my mouth. Um, so <laughs> that's hard because it's Welcome like- Welcome to the world. <laughs> just like in theory, like I would want to meet so many people, but then when I think about actually meeting them, I'm like, oh, I would throw up. Um, oh. But uh, maybe Kim Deal. I'm obsessed with Kim Deal. She's the singer songwriter from The Breeders and she was in the Pixies as well. But I'm, uh, I like her because I- <laughs> because she was asked this question of uh -oh. like uh, who would she want to meet and she's just like oh no I can't she goes I can't she goes if she was like she said I saw Neil Young at an event and I just hid in the corner and was like oh my god Neil Young's over there <laughs> she goes I will never introduce myself to anyone I'm a fan of so maybe I would meet her because I would be like hey you know how it is <laughs> there you go <laughs> Um, okay, describe yourself in five words. I've been told I'm reliable. Um, That's good. <laughs> ooh, reliable. Um, kind of funny. I don't know. I wouldn't just say funny, but maybe kind of funny. Um, okay. Uh. I feel like I'm earnest, maybe, maybe earnest. Okay. Earnest, honest. I like to be honest. I don't lie. I don't like to lie to people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, driven. I guess I'm pretty driven. Yeah. Cool. Um, and what was your last guilty pleasure? Like food, activity, whatever. Tonight for dinner, I looked in my fridge and I had food, but nothing I wanted to make. So I ordered Chinese. <laughs> that works for me. Write yourself in the novel. And why? I think it was cutting out. I didn't hear that question. Um, I said, if you could write yourself into a novel, would you be a hero or a villain and why? Ooh, 
I mean, if it's a novel, probably a hero. But if it was like a movie, a villain for sure. I feel like villains have more fun in movies. <laughs> but probably not as fun in a you book. Yeah, there's truth in that. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. But it, in a book, probably a hero, because I feel like maybe heroes have more fun on, on the page. Mm. Okay. Uh, if there's anyone you could dream, you could work with, uh, who and why? Ooh. Again, like, I feel like people I'm a fan of, but I don't know if I would want to work with them because, you know, they they have it pretty well. They do it well on their own. I don't know that I'd want to mess anything up, but um, maybe, I mean, he's, he works in television, but maybe Damon Lindelof, um, because I really loved this show he created called The Leftovers. Oh, um, yeah. So maybe him, because I, I don't know, I feel like we we could write something very weird and that would be fun. Definitely. Um, is there, what animal would you run wild with? I did not make up that question. <laughs> um, I mean, was assuming it would be like if I could be part of the pack or something. Um, yeah. Probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe a horse because I'm, I'm terrified of horses, but I think they're beautiful. Mm. So it's like every time I see a horse, I'm like, oh, they're so majestic, but I'm not going near that thing. Um, so maybe a horse, because then I could not have to worry about being afraid. I could just be one. Got it. Um, what is on your playlist? Ooh, right now. I'm bad at making playlists, but what's on repeat lately, um, I've been listening to a lot of Japanese breakfast. Um, there's a song she has called Diving Woman. And that one's just been like on repeat for like the past three days. Like I've been sending it to everybody. Like you have to hear that song, it's so good. Oh, cool. Um, so do you write, do you write to music? And if so, what kind? Sometimes, um, nothing particular. I mean, whatever I'm just listening to at the time, I'll just have it in the background. Um, sometimes if I really like want to just really let my mind wander and not think about what music I'm playing, I used to call it my art album um, because I used to also paint to it, but I still, I'll write to it here and there. But mm -hmm. um, the album Horses by Patti Smith. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that one's just kind of good to have on in the background because she just kind of does a lot in that album. So there's like kind of like sort of like peaks and valleys. So there's like, you know, there's a lot to like inspire, I feel like, in that album. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Um, Disney, Universal, Warner Brothers or other? Um. I mean, I guess Disney. I feel like Disney owns everything at this point. Um, but, but I love Disney movies. Um, yeah, like Princess and the Frog is like one of my favorite movies. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I guess Disney. Okay. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. Yeah. Appetizer or dessert? If it's... <laughs> if it's... Uh, Something fried, a dessert, I mean, an appetizer. But mm -hmm. if it's like um, like a tres leches cake, then not a dessert. <laughs> and chocolate or vanilla? I used to be so vanilla, like anti-chocolate. But lately, mm -hmm. like the past year or so, I've been really leaning into chocolate. And I find myself choosing chocolate over vanilla. So I guess I'm wow. chocolate. Cool. Yeah. Well, that... That's every, that's, that's the, well, probably more than 20 questions. <laughs> Thank you. That was absolutely awesome. And i um, looking forward to having your book come out later this year. So yeah, cool. I'm so excited. Awesome.